How's it going, everybody? Uh, Steven Stairs here. A um, little advocacy video for you here today. Um, I thought I'd touch base on the issues that are going on with Canada Post and the elimination of door to door delivery of mail uh, and the switch over to community mailboxes. Um, I've been questioning what the government was going to do for a while because I've got a, I got a letter a long time ago, uh, about a year ago almost, that uh, stated that my postal code would be one of the first uh, in the country to switch over. Um, well, I mean that we're already getting door-to-door -door delivery service, not the people who already get community mailboxes. Um, so I've already been preempting this for a long time now, and uh, I just I got this letter in the mail today. I'll show you here. I'll put a I'll put a link up to it, uh, or I'll just put a screenshot in. Um, the um, sorry, cat hair. Um, the the letter reads as indicates it does, it just addresses me as a mail recipient. So I guess we're all encompassing the people who all get mail at this house. Um, you know, we're all just one because <laughs> uh, it doesn't even say recipients. It just says recipient, which is like. Okay. Um, anyway, it says, Deal, Dear Canada Post customer, um, as you may know, the government is switching over to door-to-door -door mailbox, or is elim eliminating door-to-door -door, uh, mail, mail delivery service. Uh, sorry, I'm paraphrasing now because I'm visually impaired and I don't want to sit here with the magnifying glass reading it out. Uh, but you know what? I will now. Um, the location of the community mailbox has been determined uh, for your household and is shown below. Here is the location of your community mailbox. Blah, blah, blah. It tells me there, right? goes on. It goes on to say that they're committed to, you know, service and blah, blah, blah. Here, right, is, this is the phrase that got me. This is why I'm making the video. It says, we are uh, committed to ensuring uh, that everyone can access the postal service if you need special accommodations because you have significant mobility uh, mobility issues or lack uh, alternative for access uh, to your community mailbox please call us directly and then they provide a phone number <clears throat> so we're gonna call this phone number second here it's a one eight four four number something I've never dialed before <clears throat> I'm curious to see what their accommodations are I don't really speak French very well. calling about the conversion of your mail delivery from door to door to community mailbox, please press 1. For all other customer service inquiries, one moment, please. Bonjour, Canada Post Customer Service. My name is John. I see your call concerning the conversions of the mailboxes. Yep, that's it, John. Okay, what can I do for you today? Um, <clears throat> sorry, my name is Stephen Stairs. Uh, I'm a disability rights advocate uh, here in Winnipeg. Okay. And I'm just calling. I'm visually impaired myself. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm just calling. Uh, I just received this letter um, regarding the changeover. I'm one of the first postal codes that will be yes. switching over. Um, I'm just curious. Uh, this one line here in the letter, uh, the second paragraph, or yeah, second paragraph from the bottom. It states that um, you guys are committed to ensuring access to the mail delivery system. Exactly. Right, and then if you have any special uh, accommodations due to lack of mobility or lack of alternative access, uh, to call you guys directly. So that's what I'm doing. I'm really curious to see what Canada Post has implemented to to ensure just that. Yeah, well, I can, excuse me, I can't be assisted with that. Now, I'm not sure exactly what you're going to come up with to accommodate people with uh, mobility challenges. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take your uh, contact information and forward that to the project. And they're going to be assessing the needs on a case-by-case -case basis and get in touch with you. So what I'm going to need from you here, Mr. Stairs, is your postal code, please. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, just, just to clarify, you said that there, there are no... 
Oh no, the, we, we are, we're looking at uh, we're looking in to see what we're going to do to accommodate people because uh, we want to we do want to make sure that people with mobility challenges you know have access to their mail and parcels you know regularly. Right, but there's no so, specifics regarding security and all, that kind of stuff right now as in place. You're taking it on a case by case basis. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So what we're doing now is we take the information, we send it over to the project, and they're going to look into this, and they will be getting in touch with you um, to discuss uh, your needs and the next steps of what we're going to do. Okay. Um, yeah, definitely. I would, I would love a, a phone call back, okay. sure. Okay. So your postal code? Uh, and you say you're visually impaired, right? Yes. I'm not, le- I'm not completely blind, but I am legally blind, and I do have some limitations regarding that. Uh, I also know that there are several... Uh, Mobility challenged um, elderly residents on my on my block as well that might have concerns regarding safety and, and access. Hey. Oh, one one of the big concerns that I have personally, uh, it being here in Winnipeg, is um, snow removal. Yeah. How does how does that come? Does that ca- come down on a on a civic level, or is it the federal government's responsibility to maintain these? No. Well, basically, we uh, snow removal will continue to be a major important. And uh, what we do is uh, we clear the snow around community mailbox to ensure that, you know, you guys maintain access. Right. So as, as long as the city plows the sidewalk, you guys will plow the rest? That's right. Perfect. <laughs> okay. And uh, what is your phone number? Okay, so just hold the line for a moment. I'm going to prepare this, and I'll be right back, okay? Sure. Thanks. Okay, so... I think that's pretty funny. They don't have any system set up. They're setting it by a case-by-case basis. How many people are they going to call? Are they going to have like 10 million residents of Canada calling with concerns that are dealing on a case-by-case basis? That's absurd. How much more money is this costing? <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I see flaws. I like their attitude, but I see flaws. I'd like to know what your concerns are regarding this. Express them in a comment or or you can just respond to this video with another video. I'm always down to hear people. I'm just jamming to this whole music, trying to enjoy it. These are my eye drops, everybody. They also help with glaucoma, made from a derivative uh, of marijuana. It's it, they've been made from from marijuana synthetics and extracts for you know 25 years. I think this is where the jokes come from. See, and you can. Yeah, it's good stuff. Got to take those one in each eye every night, or else uh, my eyes will explode. <laughs> That's a joke, but I'm not joking. (laughs) (coughs) Alright, I don't know how long this is going to take here. I say you have to enjoy life if you're you're stuck with the monotonies of things like being on hold with the government. I think you might as well enjoy it. Kick your feet up, party a little bit, you know? I mean, as long as you're getting your stuff done, then I think you might as well have some fun in life. Life is too, uh, life is too short to be serious all the time. You can be serious, but you don't have to be, you know, stuck up or emotionless. You can, you can enjoy being serious. You know, enjoy the fruits of your labor. Just some advice, guys. Oh, okay, thank you very much for holding this affair. Yeah, no problem, man, no problem. Over to the project. Sorry? Now, from what I see here, the conversions will not be uh, all completed until the fall of 2014. Right. However, before that time, as I say, we will be getting in touch with you to discuss the next steps. And also, uh, specific to this uh, request here, within the next two to four weeks, you will be uh, receiving a questionnaire in the mail. And we ask you to complete it and mail it back to us using the prepaid return envelope so that we can better understand the situation. And also, this will help us identify the best solution to ensure that you do have regular access to your mail and parcels. And uh, I'm going to give you a confirmation number for this call here. So 
Did you have a pen and paper? Um, you know what? I do. Just give me one second. Okay. I'm a little slow on the gun. <laughs> it's that uh, that vision loss thing. Sometimes I uh, I think I'm more prepared than I am. Yeah. to the best of us. Yeah. All right. What do you got for me, man? Uh, Okay, now you said that there's no time frame expected on when I should receive a phone call back, but I will receive... You will most definitely receive that questionnaire um, within the two to four weeks. Right. We may uh, get in touch with you within the next five business days, or we'll get in touch with you after we do receive the uh, questionnaire and look over it. Okay. 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 All right, so yeah, so uh, I sent that off, so uh, you'll be expecting to get that questionnaire in two to four weeks. Perfect. Okay. Thanks so much. Sorry, what was your name? Uh, John. John, thanks so much, man. That's my middle name. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, it was my pleasure, Mr. Stairs, and uh, have yourself a great day. Right on, buddy. Thanks for answering all my questions. You're welcome. Take, take care. Take care. All right. Well, so that's funny. So I either get five days of call back, five business days, or uh, they'll hear back from or I'll hear back from them sometime after they receive my questionnaire, which I won't receive for two to four weeks. So we're looking at like at least four weeks probably. Um, that's interesting. Um, I find it funny there was also a prepaid envelope. So like they're, I, I want to know like the the numbers behind like their, their net losses and their ben cost benefit analysis for the changeover and the, the decision that it would save them money in the long run. I'm just, I want to know, like, are, are we, are we spending a hundred million to save 500 million? Like, okay. But if we're only, if we're spending like a whole bunch of, of taxpayer dollars to just maybe make us look more efficient as a, as a Canada post, you know, as a company, uh, I don't, I don't think I agree with that. I mean, I think there's going to be a lot of people who might be out of work and a lot of people who are going to be facing issues with with things like this, this mobility issue and, and other things, security and safety and, and, and so many other things. I mean, the city is going to have to rely on, on third-party contractors to make sure that they plow the snow very well around these things and don't damage them because if not, then the city is going to start getting dinged for the replacement of them because federal government's not going to take care of it. Neither is the province. So I think this is just a big, you know, cluster of, 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 of bureaucratic decisions that aren't really thought through. Um, you know, maybe that's just my standpoint as a, you know, lowly taxpayer, but I think the government's failed to convince me as to why, um, not necessarily why, but if this is going to affect anybody negatively and they really haven't taken that side of the coin and they've just been like, oh, there's concerns, but we'll mitigate them. Well, that's not reassuring enough for me. And I know it's not for a lot of the other people out there in the community who feel the same concerns that I do or similar concerns for that matter of, of access and things like that. So um, I hope you enjoyed this little video. Uh, spontaneous off the cuff. I was reading my mail and it just hit me. Um, so if you guys feel like you know, let me know what happens with you and, and that kind of stuff. Let me know. I'd, I'd really like, like to know how this affects you. And if it doesn't affect you, that's cool. Like, I mean, deal with it. I mean, I get affected by it. You're not. That's cool. You know, differences of opinion. Awesome. That's why we're Canada. We're, we're a multicultural place where it's free to express your feelings. So, good on you. Other than that, everybody, I hope you enjoyed it. And, um, yeah, you know, legalize weed. Medical cannabis saves lives. Peace.